Hi, I'm Liz Parker, senior editor of Candy Industry Magazine. Today we're talking with Jeff Rubin, the founder of It Sugar. Thank for being thank you for being here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. So we to start out, um, you founded It Sugar in 2006. How did the idea for the brand come about and branding it as Sugartainment? You know, in my past concepts, I I I co-created a concept called Dylan's Candy Bar. So I used the, the, the candy word. And before that, I was I created FAO Sweets, which is, I, I kind of said I, I used the sweets word. So all that was left was the third word, which was sugar. And back then, it was pretty bold. Um, all the advice I was getting is, um, you, you know, you don't want to put sugar on the storefront. And I had the opposite um, feeling. Um, I wasn't going to hide from what I sold. I was very proud to sell candy and candy is an incredible treat and the world's better because we have treats like candy and I was not going to um, shy away from that. So I continued to find um, a consultant um, that would agree with me and the sixth consultant I spoke to agreed to name your story at Sugar and if she didn't, I would have found a seventh consultant. Um, so. Um, um, it was bold. It was what we were. Um, and, um, and, uh, you know, I'm proud that we, you know, to be a candy store and it's sugar. And, um, I think what's funny today is that, um, 17 years later, it seems like every candy store that comes out or candy department in a general store is called sugar something. So, um, I'm glad that we were on the, the forefront of that back then. Um, so the entertainment part, um, I believe, comes from the fact that, um, you know, I call it sugar a retail tainer. And, um, you know, there's, there's multiple different facets to being a retail tainer. Um, you know, one of them is, um, you know, you have sound, ambiance, um, you know, energy, and, and the fourth was emotion. And uh, emotion is what you get when you sell a product like we sell. Um, candy has that way of getting to you the way that, you know, apparel, accessory, shoes, jewelry, um, other typical retail, um, 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 you know, products don't. Um, you know, candy elicits that emotion. It makes you think of, you know, having a, uh, your grandparents bringing you a candy treat. It makes you think of, Halloween and there's something about candy that makes you smile. It's a feel good product. Um, and so it elicits that emotion. So right away, I knew we had the very first ingredient to being a retail tainer. And that was, we had a product that, that tug at the emotional uh, side of everybody. Okay. Um, speaking of that, so it sugar stores, they have both con candy and confectionery items and also merchandise like t-shirts, pillows, candy. What made you want to sell both at the store? See, so I think what it sugar's done that's resonated and, and carved a niche out for ourselves is I, I kind of say simply we offer, um, uh, you know, our vendor partners, uh, more than a peg hook. So, you know, the candy industry is a nearly $38 billion, you know, machine. 92% um, of that, which is the rocket fuel of that engine, is really all the mass candy aisles out there, of masses of peg hooks filled with candy bags. And I just felt that, um, you know, what we could do is uh, tap more into, um, you know, the emotion side of candy, what it does for you, and why not sell uh, candy uh, scented candles and pillows and t shirts of your favorite brand? Um, you know, I'll wear my favorite candy brand on my across my chest. I'll wear a hat with a candy character on it. Um, um, I don't know if, you, if, if there's a market for, you know, wishbone salad dressing t shirts or other. Um, items that, you know, you find out there in the grocery store. There's something about the snack aisle, the sugar um, aisle that kind of elicits that emotional attachment to people wanting to um, have more than just the candy. Um, and so um, 
we said, let's offer more than just candy. Let's bring these brands to life. Let's give them um, uh, more than just, it's a, a peg hook on a candy aisle. Um, let's immerse the customers in their favorite brands. Um, let's continue to build our stores larger and hold all these brands in it, almost creating a candy department store um, world for them to live in. So um, um, that's kind of how, you know, it all came about. It separates us from everybody else. Um, and uh, we've worked diligently to do, you know, many of these as exclusive uh, candy license just to add sugar um, so that we could have a special place and serve a special place in this incredible um, sweet industry. Okay. Um, I had a different question to ask, but I'm going to come back to that later based on something you just said. So it sugar opened its first candy department store in December, 2019 at the American dream in New Jersey. How did the idea for the candy department store come about? You know, my background, um, was toys. I grew up in the toy industry, my favorite and in most inspirational store that I, I kind of model everything the day off of was FAO Schwartz, the famous toy store in Manhattan. Um, I've been going there ever since I was a little kid. And um, I was proud to create a department called FAO Schweetz within FAO Schwartz. And um, what they created for the toy industry was uh, a toy department store, far different than the Target candy toy aisle or Toys R Us. And I always dreamed of doing the same thing for candy. I felt that we could take all the candy brands and house them into one arena. Um, what a magical place for everybody to go to. You may outgrow toys, but you never outgrow gummy bears and Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> so um, uh, I felt the audience would be larger and more wide. Um, you know, for, for, for this kind of concept. So believe it or not, the concept was actually 25 years in the making. It just took 25 years to finally find the right place and to bring it to life. Um, so uh, I credit um, a really great partner. Um, you know, It Sugar is uh, now owned by BBX Capital. And, um, and so I feel uh, we both shared this vision of, of this place in the candy industry. And um, it all led to that first candy department store um, right outside Manhattan. When did that one open? Which year? Oh, 20, so 2019? Was, uh, yes, that was, we opened it December of 19 and it quickly okay. became our number one store. It's our number one store today. And, um, and so it's uh, been a tremendous success and uh, um, it fueled the growth for the expansion of these. Okay. Um, and then for our audience, what are some of the best selling sweets or confectionery items at It Sugar? Oh, you would get me in trouble if I <laughs> answer that question. And our, <laughs> um, so I really, I, I know it's going to sound like I'm, um, this is a cop out, but it's everything. You know, what, what, when we punch up our sales each day, it is truly remarkable how wide um, it is. And it just shows you that if you put a hundred people in a room and ask them all what their favorite candy is, you'll probably get about 80 different answers. And, um, yeah. and so it's really um, across the board, everything. Um, we, um, you know, gummies and sours and chocolates and licorices. It's just right across the board. And it all, um, um, like I said, you can house a lot of candy in 24,000 square feet over three floors. So um, uh, it's really everything. Okay. Um, to turn the tables, I guess, what's your favorite product from the store? Uh-oh, now you're really <laughs> going to get me in trouble. Um, so... I do, I swear, I mean, I get another cop up. I like, I, I pretty much like all candy. Um, I guess, um, you know, I have a special place in my heart for the yellow starburst because sometimes it could look all alone in a bin. And um, so um, uh, I love, uh, because I went to Michigan, I love the blue and yellow um, peanut M&M &M, uh, 
colors um, for my Michigan Wolverines. Um, I love gummies uh, and I love sours. So um, a bag of gummies and sours together would would make me very happy. Um, my favorite Jelly Belly flavors, toasted marshmallow, and my favorite <laughs> um, uh, licorice is the Red Twizzler. Okay. I actually also went to Michigan. I'm in the Detroit area, so go blue. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes I'll like to get, you can get like blue and yellow M&Ms and make like a custom <laughs> thing. That's always fun. Yeah, so um, they, and because we went to Michigan, we throw the red ones out, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> right. Uh, no Ohio State m and allowed. Right. Um, and then my final question, what's next for the brand? Do you have any locations upcoming? Sure, we're going to open up um, uh, a candy department, two candy department stores in September. We're really excited about it. One is downtown Miami. Um, so that'll be 18,000 square feet. Um, in Miami. And then the other one I'm really, really excited about is the famed Faneuil Hall in Boston. We currently have a 5,000 square foot store there that we're going to triple the size and open in, in the fall. So um, on, the, on the heels of that one's success. So really excited to continue to add um, these uh, candy department stores where people and candy lovers from all over the world can come and enjoy and immerse themselves in um, whatever their favorite candy is. Sounds good. Well, thanks again for being here with us today. You've got it. Thank you and go blue. Go blue.